Lions hunt large prey. Prey that feeds more mouths for longer and delays the need to hunt again soon. Lions do not generally target olive baboons. These monkeys can inflict serious wounds. And with so many watching eyes, baboons are hard to sneak up on. Even so, this troop is in danger from big cats. Africa's Great Rift Valley is home to many baboons, but it's the ones living in Tarangira, known as the place of running water, that have to keep a constant watch for lions. The monkeys do well here and live in large troops even though they live among monkey hunters. Baboons must never relax their guard. Lions operate undercover. To trap a monkey, the big cat must become invisible. The baboons are cautious, constantly watching for danger. The way ahead looks clear. If the monkeys sense anything suspicious, they'll run for their lives. They stay close to cover, unaware that they could be walking into a lion's den. This baboon made a lucky escape, but lions have to eat, and so must kill. High in the branches, the monkeys are out of reach, but they will have to come down for food and water, and when they do, the predators of Tarangira will be waiting for them. In Tanzania's Tarangira National Park, the river always flows. In the dry season, migratory animals come to drink, and then the predators have plenty to hunt. But when it rains on the plains beyond Tarangira, the herds wander away. All that's left in the park with the baboons are residents like impala and elephants, which are difficult for lions to ambush. Tarangira's lions are well known, not as monkey hunters, but for their tree climbing abilities. Leopards are designed for climbing, lighter and more agile than lions, they're completely at home in tall trees. When a baboon troop finds a lone leopard, all hell breaks loose. This spotted cat can climb high and catch a monkey sleeping up in the branches. But this troop has come upon a juvenile leopard resting up a tree. On its own, the young cat is not a great threat to the monkeys. It's inexperienced, outnumbered, and clearly nervous. The monkeys know the outer branches will support their weight, but not the cats. 
they cannot resist the opportunity to mob their enemy. The young cat's mother could return at any time, so the baboons daren't taunt for long. The day is drawing to a close, and the troop must reach a safe place to spend the night. By day, baboons rely on each other and good eyesight to spot danger, but they don't see well in the dark. So, before the sun sets, they must get out of reach of prowling predators. This troop will go to astonishing lengths to get a good night's sleep. No big cat could climb this huge rock monolith, so the summit is a safe haven. It's enough of an incentive for the baboons to attempt the perilous ascent. The rock face is almost vertical, and even for a baboon, it must be daunting. Tiny toe holds are the monkey's only grip on the sheer rock wall. Scaling such heights is an amazing feat, especially for females with young. This is taking extreme climbing to its very limits. The long climb must be especially frightening for youngsters just too big to hitch a ride. Juveniles have to make it on their own. Mothers can only carry infants. The fact that the baboons do make it to the top is testament to their incredibly strong limbs, fingers and toes. And they're obviously not scared of heights. Narrow ledges where the monkeys can rest are few. Here size and might are a definite advantage. Males use their bulk to push others out of the way. The heaving sides of this male show that even for these agile monkeys, the climb is a big effort. Baboons can't climb in darkness. The whole troop must make it to the top before the sun goes down and predators start to prowl. Leopards and lions prefer to hunt when it's cool. They're most active between dusk and dawn. Up above, the baboons doze peacefully. High on their rock, they know they can sleep safely all night long. Far below, others must rely on instinct and sharp reactions to survive.
Secure on their lofty perch, the baboons barely stir in their sleep, even though they can probably hear the life and death struggles playing out far below. Lightning is a signal that rain is imminent in Tarangira. This leopard's fat and healthy cubs reflect their mother's hunting prowess. After a successful night, she won't be a threat to the baboons today. This lioness, though, remains a danger to the troop. She didn't eat much last night. A lion is not as adept as a leopard at bringing down impala. With the herds of large prey far away, this lioness is finding it hard to provide for her family. Her cubs are very thin. She must kill soon, or her cubs could die. Once she's hidden her babies, this lioness will have to hunt on into the day. Baboons are not early risers. They doze until after sunrise, when predators have usually stopped hunting. They also need light so that they can see before starting a tricky descent. This morning descending is anything but easy. It's rained in the night, and the sheer rock face is now very slippery. With no firm toe holds, this male loses his footing and his nerve. It may be a long and dangerous descent, but the baboons have to come down for food and water. And a fall from this high up would be fatal. It's a big risk, but unavoidable. With nowhere to hold on, there's no choice but to slide down the last few meters. Though holding on to another's tail is an unfair tactic. The wet season is only just starting, but the first showers turn the wall into an unassailable slick rock. The troop is forced to abandon it. For the next few months, they must find somewhere else to sleep, somewhere out of the reach of the big cats. If lions have to hunt in daylight, there's no better location for an ambush than a waterhole. Elephants will not tolerate lions near them. So if a family group is drinking, 
the baboons feel safe to come down to the water. Baby elephants have to learn to use their trunk like a straw. Most don't master the skill until they're about a year old. Until then, they have to get down on their knees. Baboons like to drink every day, but some, it seems, don't like getting their hands wet. Baboons benefit from having these giants around in other ways, too. Their presence in the park provides a steady supply of food. Elephants deposit huge quantities of dung every day. The baboons pick through the heaps searching for and eating undigested seeds and berries. Joining the baboons in this communal feast are banded mongooses. Dung beetles are their favorite prey. At certain times of year, they make up three quarters of the mongoose's diet. This makes elephants important neighbors. Baboons live in an animal community where all the members benefit from one another. The more eyes there are watching for danger, the less chance a predator has of sneaking up on any of them. Impala also add to the mix. Each animal in the baboon's community uses its senses in different ways. These different points of view, from high and low, make it much more difficult for any of them to be caught unawares by big cats. Red diker don't often venture out into the open, but feel safe drinking among this crowd. Bushbuck are shy forest antelopes that rarely leave the security of the trees. They too feel safe with baboons around as extra sentinels to warn them if a lion appears. Young baboons are very curious. This one probably hasn't come across a courting bullfrog before. His calls are designed to attract a female, not a hungry hammer cop. To thwart enemies, bullfrogs puff themselves up to twice their size. This makes them difficult for the bird to swallow. This young baboon is fascinated. The frog is obviously of interest to the bird, so maybe it's good to play with. Maybe it's edible. Hmm, doesn't taste good. Even so, the monkey is not going to let the bird have it. Yes, yeah, sometimes it's not a bad thing to be tossed aside.
The lioness has been hunting all morning with little success. She's looking for easy victims like the sick, the old, or the young. Success at last. One life is lost, so others can survive. However, the rest of her pride is nearby, and they've... It will soon be too hot to hunt, but with a young family to feed, the lioness cannot give up. A lone family of resident warthogs presents another chance. is a mere mouthful, but with cubs to suckle, the lioness needs to catch anything she can. The baboons also need to feed. That means crossing the river and getting their feet wet although not necessarily their hands. are heading for the trees and their departure hasn't gone unnoticed. The banded mongooses have no intention of being left down by the river all on their own. Their relationship with the baboons is so secure they'll feed right in amongst them. They don't even mind playful youngsters. shoots, insects and seeds, even the hard fruit of the sausage tree. They gnaw through the hard skin and outer layers and eat the pulp and pips inside. They stuff their cheek pouches with food they'll eat later on, off the ground and out of the reach of prowling big cats. It's wise to be cautious, but by mid-morning, most predators are catnapping.
Impala are rarely found alone. Like baboons, they feel safer in a crowd. But at the onset of labor, each female goes off to find a quiet spot where she'll attract the least attention. Impala usually give birth mid-morning, as most hunters will be asleep by then. The fawn will be on its feet and running well before the light starts to fade. There are always some mongooses on sentry duty because attacks can come from out of the blue. With so many eyes watching out for each other, it's very hard for any predator to hunt these animals in broad daylight. Mongooses are quick to warn of danger, and the baboons respond swiftly to their chirping alarm calls. The mongooses dive for cover. Crowned eagles are quite capable of killing them. This powerful bird of prey can take baby baboons. The troop will not tolerate the presence of such a threat. The enemy has flown, but this mother is taking no risks. Like most monkeys, baboons carry their newborn young clinging to their bellies. But baboons spend a lot of their time on the ground, so the youngsters soon learn to ride on an adult's back. Males like to carry babies too, usually to curry favor with their mothers. Tiny babies instinctively cling on tight, but benefit from a guiding parental hand. When it comes to impressing a mother, some males just haven't got what it takes. Females teach their youngsters the rules of baboon society. Naughty babies are ignored, given a reprimanding nip or refused a cuddle, however hard they yell. Generally, though, baboons are tolerant and protective mothers. Males can be very protective of infants, but they also use them to protect themselves. If a male is threatened, he may pick up a baby and use it as a tool to keep his challenger at bay. He knows the other male may want to attack, but he won't want to risk harming a helpless youngster. As long as the male in possession can keep the baby between him and his assailant, he can ward off an attack. But if a 
fight gets nasty, the males may forget their strength and things can get rough. Fortunately, the tiny babies are tougher than they look. Usually, they escape unharmed and back into the arms of a comforting sibling. But sometimes, it can go horribly wrong. No one knows why this baby died, but the male is confused. He doesn't know quite what to do with an infant that doesn't respond in any way. Juvenile baboons often get into trouble. This one has seriously upset a dominant male. The youngster turns to a powerful friend for help. <laughs> Hiding behind a male protector, the juvenile uses the big male as an effective shield. is to divert the attention away from itself and draw its friend into the fight. Yawning and flashing teeth are a clear sign of aggression. big male to back down concedes dominance and the dispute is soon settled. The irksome youngster though has not been forgotten, apparently forgiven. Each individual has to learn what is acceptable behavior and what is not. Reprimanded for his misdemeanor, this juvenile is being put firmly in his place. By midday, it's too hot to want to sort out quarrels, and it's far too hot to hunt. So, for a few short hours, the monkeys can relax.
Baboons are social animals. They have close family ties and make long-lasting friendships. Friends and relations regularly groom each other. This is essential for getting rid of parasites, but also appears to be bliss. Even extremities get a thorough going over. Eventually it gets too hot to do anything but hang out. When the temperature rises to over 30 degrees, the baboons and impala know it's safe to sleep on the ground. Only a really desperate big cat would hunt in this heat. Big males are extremely tolerant of youngsters. Gaining the trust of a baby can be very useful. Apart from being an asset in disputes with other males, these relationships can lead to special friendships with the baby's mother. As soon as it starts to cool down, the baboons move off to feed again. Figs are a favorite food. The baboons know every tree in their range and when its fruits will ripen. Faced with such abundance, the baboons drop all but the sweetest. Those waiting below reap the benefits. Ripe fruit attracts insects and they in turn draw insectivorous birds like the beautifully camouflaged firefinch. By mid-afternoon, it's cool enough for the youngsters in the crowd to play. These games are very important to young animals. They help develop relationships, muscles and coordination. It also looks like fun.
By late afternoon, the big cats begin to wake up. They don't usually start hunting until it's much cooler. However, this juvenile leopard has spotted the chance for a game of cat and mouse. Or, in this case, cat and slender mongoose. There's no baboon troop to warn this mother of danger. Leopards don't usually hunt slender mongooses. This female with two well-grown babies is a... The baboons must be off the ground and out of reach well before dusk when predators start to emerge. It's time for the troop to move towards a new sleeping site. Now that rain threatens, they will no longer return to the rock and risk a dangerous descent. Instead, they need to find some tall trees, trees that cats can't climb. This lioness is still hungry. With the herds far away, she's having to hunt long hours. She's on the lookout for anything she can catch. As a large troop, these baboons are relatively safe, but this dried up riverbed offers many places for hungry cats to hide. One of the lioness's older cubs has started accompanying his mother. He instinctively knows to lie low, to watch and wait. The lioness is patient. She must let the prey come to her. The juvenile panics. It's wrong move is its last. This evening a palm grove provides sanctuary. In a few weeks, the plains will dry out again and the herds will return to the Tarangira River. Then the time of hardship for the cats will be over. The baboons will no longer be so vulnerable to attack. But with monkey hunters around, they must be ever vigilant.